Ooh, hold on, spilled my coffee. Um, ooh, give me a roll of paper towels from up under the counter. You see them? Where, where they at? They're right over there, um, next to, uh, that, that big blue box. I don't, I don't see nothing down here. They, um, they up over there next to, uh, that box of the paper bags. Um, right up on top of that big blue box. You see it? Oh. That's what you need? What's up, everybody? What's good? My name's EK, and welcome to What's Good English. If this is your first time here on this channel, I focus on colloquial English, slang, idioms, African-American vernacular, and other curiosities of English so you can learn to understand how English is really spoken. Today's episode is going to be another episode about African-American vernacular, but it's going to be a little bit different than my normal episodes in my AAVE series. Recently, I've been doing a lot of research for future episodes of African American Vernacular, which led me to read this book, Talking Back, Talking Black, by John McWhorter. I recommend everybody read the book. It's a really great read, and you can find some really cool, interesting things about African American Vernacular in that book. One of the reasons I say this episode will be a little bit different, and possibly the next two or three episodes I do in the series, is because I'll be following some of the advice that he gave in his book to people who are trying to present African American Vernacular as a legitimate dialect of English or alternate version of English. When we're making our case that it's a legitimate dialect of English, one of the things a lot of us do is focus on things that we have simplified in African American vernacular. For example, removing the word is and are in the present tense, saying things like they fishing instead of they are fishing. Another thing we do is present alternate grammar, like the habitual be, saying I be forgetting things, meaning that I usually forget things or I'm a person that is forgetful. But what he suggested in his book was that maybe we should present things that it adds or present something that would be super hard for someone to learn and grasp the concept of if they were say in a classroom setting and they had to learn African American vernacular. Like what would be the equivalent of say a phrase like aunque in espanol? or something like wa versus ga in Japanese, something that usually gives people that are learning a different language a hard time. Even when they have fluency, they're still unsure of certain concepts, if they're saying things correctly, or if they got the meaning of something correctly in a sentence. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So the first word that I'm gonna talk about that has a ton of different meanings to it, and would definitely be difficult for someone to master is this word right here, up. Now, some of you might be thinking, up, really? Up, you gonna start with up, like two letters, like up as in the opposite of down is up? Like, yes, we are starting there. And a few of you might even recall a certain part of a chorus from an old DMX song. Rest in peace, X. Now let's look at the phrase up in here. This is a phrase and a usage of the word up that has existed in AAVE long before DMX put it in that song and has been in use long after that song became famous. But my question is, what does up mean? Like, what do you think it means? Black people that watch my content and already speak AAVE. What does up mean? What work is it doing here in this phrase? Because you don't need it. I can say, I'm gonna lose my mind in here, and that means the same thing. So what work is up doing for us? Legit question. What do you think? Put it in the comments. Second question. Why would somebody say she up in the house playing with her dolls and not she up on the bus playing with her doll or up in the bus playing with her doll? And yes, by the way, we do use the word up as a directional indicator. You can be up in, up on, up over, up under, up through, up by, up next to, up around, the list goes on. But I'm not talking about it as a directional indicator here. Why would I say she's up in the house playing with dolls and she's on the bus playing with dolls instead of up on the bus playing with dolls? The answer, hmm, bit complicated. We will get to it. But first, let's look at an example exchange that has uses of up in it. And after that, we will dissect it, 
and I will offer you a definition. A definition by John McWhorter, who wrote the book I mentioned at the start of the episode. You might not agree with it. To be real, I don't 100% agree with it either. We'll get to that as well. But his definition did finally remove some of the cobwebs to allow me to make this episode, so it does indeed work. Boy, who are all these random people you got up in my house like this? All them? I, I had invited them over to play Street Fighter. And what makes you think you can just have random people all up in my house like this, boy? We was up at Jason and Elm's house, and uh, he didn't have an extra fight stick, and I had everything over here already, so we just came up here, like, you know, it just, like, happened organically, right? Oh, 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 so it happened organically. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well you about to get an organic gas when we don't get these people up out my house. Y'all gotta leave. Okay, so let's get rid of the easy ones first. The phrase came up here, up is just being used as a directional indicator, indicating the action of the people. The phrase, get these people up out my house, get these people up out my house. Simple, right? Which leads us to more complicated phrases. Why are these strange people up in my house and we were up at Jason's house? Now, the definition that James McWhorter gives the word up is a way to indicate or signal familiarity or intimacy with a certain location. For example, my house is a location I know intimately. I'm very familiar there, I'm comfortable there. So I would use a phrase like up in my house. Who are these people up in my house? My friends up in my house. She is up in my house playing with dolls, whatever. The same can be said about Jason's house. The speaker is obviously friends with Jason. They were there playing Street Fighter and therefore that, that speaker is comfortable being up in Jason's house. Following that logic, I'm much less likely to use the word up indicating familiarity if I'm in the house of someone that I don't know or don't particularly like. I'm not gonna say I'm up in that person's house. I'm just gonna say, yeah, I'm over so-and-so's house. Hey man, where you at? Yeah, man, I'm up at Robert house. Um, We finna watch a movie in a minute, man. What you got going on? Oh, for real? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at Brandon's house. Um, oh yeah? That dude always struck me as a little, I don't know, off? Yeah, man, he, he gave me a bag of a cranberry flavored salmon skin. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like something I expect from that dude, man. Yeah, laugh, whatever, fine. All right, man, well, I'm finna watch this movie with Robin and them, so uh, just let me know how it pans out. <laughs> cranberry fish chips. <laughs> So the part of the definition that you might have a bit of an issue with, including myself, is that we use up as a directional indicator so much that it still works in all of those sentences with or without indicating that I'm familiar with the particular location, which is completely fine. Occasionally, up will mean something extra in one sentence and it won't have that same connotation in another. For example, if I did say I'm up at the dentist's office, I might just be indicating that I had to go uptown to the dentist's office or I'm going up over to the dentist's office. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm comfortable in the dentist's office. Like I said, if I were up at my friend's house playing video games, that means I know the place, I'm comfortable with the place, as well as the direction of the place. It's weird. It's hard to explain everything. I probably have not appeased you with this particular answer, but it is something to think about. The word up is used a lot in African American vernacular. If you listen to any of us speak at length, you will hear us use up to indicate all different sorts of things, but up does indeed indicate familiarity. There are times where I have left up out of a sentence and maybe it was just something that I naturally picked up a long time ago through mastering the language, mastering my own mother tongue. That is gonna do it for this episode. The next episode that I do in this series will be something else a little bit difficult to explain, something that would really throw you for a loop if you were in a class trying to pick this up as your second language. I hope you did enjoy it and stick around. I've got so much more for you guys on the way. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.